<laughs> I don't know why I switched my... Hey there, BDBers, and welcome to another What's Cooking, our crowdfunding format where we take a look at a new recipe and tell you if the ingredients make a masterpiece or not. My name is Rachel, and today's dish is being served straight from the Roman Empire. In Age of Rome, players take on the role of influential Roman leaders seeking to gain power in an always expanding Roman Empire. Do you have what it takes to betray other players and walk away with the victory and the keys to the Roman Empire? I guess we will find out. Age of Rome is broken up into four phases over nine rounds. First, the scheme phase. Draw an event card and read the text out loud and give the appropriate bonus to the player. If a scheme in your color is in front of another player, you may scheme against them. Flip the scheme token and show that it's used, then remove a few token from your board and give it to the player you attacked. They, in turn, set it on their player board. These few tokens block a player from accessing their bonus during the action phase. Don't forget to activate one of your special feud actions. In the building phase, starting with the first players, build as many buildings as you would like, but only in the region in front of you. Pay the money and receive the points. Each new building built or upgraded lets you raise a population of that region and provides future places to place workers in the action phase. In the action phase, players place their workers one at a time in the player order on the buildings in the region in front of them. You can get more workers each time you pass a milestone on the glory track. If you use the military building, you can place a soldier in the conflict region, or take a bite by placing a vote token on the column in the center. Or maybe you fancy a trip to the docks where you can collect a tray card. These can be used to create sets or perform a special action on your turn. If you use the religious building, pick up that hammer and build your pantheon. If you build the fastest, you can receive the golden pieces, which are worth more points at the end. Visit the farm and make some money for those crops based on what round you're in. Instead of using a building action, you can choose from two other actions. If you're short on points, go to the Colosseum where you will receive one point. Lastly, if you want to scheme against someone in the future, this is the phase to do it. Take one of your scheme tokens and one worker and place them on the main board in the region in front of you. Once all workers have in place, next comes the income phase. Gain one coin based on the population number. Three population, three coins. Or you can double the tax by gaining double the coins by losing some points. Lastly, rotate the map in the direction indicated on the event card. After nine rounds, a new emperor of Rome will be chosen. Players gain extra points for their quest cards, their pantheon, the location and the amount of voting tokens, the trade sets you have, and who has the most soldiers in a contested area. Remember, each player gains one point for every four coins. Age of Rome is a fresh take on an often used worker placement mechanism. This is combined with area majority, set collection, and a super cool twist map deformation. This provides an interesting balance of tension. You need to build buildings for the points, but you also set up other players to use those buildings and benefit from them in the future turns. Or if they time it right, to upgrade those buildings for even more points. Speaking of buildings, these transparent tiles look absolutely amazing on the board. It was, however, time consuming due to the removing of the protective film from the tiles, which is obviously not super environment friendly. But it's not often we get a prototype that is already deluxe quality, and they even have more stretch goal surprises to make it look even better. Also, I'd like to see the Colosseum and Scheme actions added to the reference card. Currently, under the action phase, only the building actions are described, which to me makes this phase a little confusing because the rest of the reference card explains the game extremely well while you're playing, I kept forgetting about the Colosseum and Scheme action since it isn't included. Besides that, the table presence is great, and the theme even comes through in a big way through the building of the Pantheon, as well as the awesome column used for voting. It really felt like I was in Rome claiming the power that was destined to be mine. Although Age of Rome has an impressive look, it's not a super heavy game. Actually, it's between family and expert, leaning more towards family weight. 
Thus, I believe that it also has the potential to be a great gateway game. I recommend Age of Rome if you love the Roman theme mixed with a tasty new take on worker placement, delicious artwork, and great looking components. If that sounds like you, head on over to the campaign using the link in the description and we will see you there. I know for a fact that there is a spot on my shelf for the final copy, which I can't wait to see. If you found this video helpful in making a decision on whether or not this game is for you, leave a like, share it with a friend, and absolutely subscribe. And as always, stay hungry for more board games. I'll see you next time. Juice.